more supplies. We were running low last week uh, on uh, resin. So there we go, more resin and also the hardener. So, some more. One of the pumps broke, so we've got a new uh, pack, new set. More acetone. I don't know what that is, I'm guessing it's probably some more uh, fiberglass mat. And most importantly, our next step in the kill repair, these guys, uh, which is the Sikomin uh, epoxy expanding foam. Well, this was recommended by uh, one of the subscribers, so we got that. Um, we initially actually bought a different one, which was um, a polyurethane expanding foam. We'll probably talk about this next weekend when we are ready to put some foam inside of that sump tank. And uh, yeah, exciting times. As usual, this guy here jumped in straight into work. There is no time to lose. <laughs> to plan for today. What's the plan for today? Oh, for today it's like usually fixing a kill. Yeah, we continue with that. I know it's yeah. boring and we don't want to... Oh, two minutes up, babe. I know that recently almost every visit uh, to the boatyard looks almost the same because uh, we are laying fiberglass over and over. So, yeah. Not much to show, it's kind of on repeat. But uh, it is what it is, that's, that's what the process looks like. Uh, we've got to go through every step and that's what we are showing you. We build up the thickness on the inside of the sump tank on the port side. Now this is getting trickier and trickier, no? The bigger the piece. Because you've got to fold it before you put it inside. And then it's tricky to unfold it because it sort of sticks uh, to itself. We also want to add a few more layers to the outside of the sump tank. The last layer for today. Last layer for today. It's weird how when we apply, well, when we prepare so many layers of uh, the mat, you think you're going to see the difference, but it's barely noticeable. That's why it's such a time consuming uh, process to apply layers and layers before you start noticing that you're actually gaining back that uh, thickness of the hole that we had originally. Yeah, it takes time to build it back. It was pretty thick and only what four layers of what we just applied gives us... How much did it give us? I don't know. I can't even see it by eye, literally. <laughs> it just looks the same. But I'm sure it's thicker than it was an hour ago. The heaters are on and drying the mats because we would really like to pour the first layer of the foam to the bottom of the sump tank today. We test a small quantity first to see the difference between the two products we have. So we measure out and mix the components together. So that's Sikomin, it's mixed, it's roughly how much is in there. We didn't put much, just to test it. Let's do poly... Urethane. Poly urethane. So now... Part 
Part A of the polyurethane needs to be mixed first prior to mixing part A and B together. So here you can see this is just, I stopped mixing and this is just working straight away. Now this is shown in real time, so you can see how quickly the polyurethane foam expands, whereas the expansion of sicomine, although it's taking place, it is barely noticeable. This is done in a room, or I should say shed temperature, which is lower than the required 20 degrees Celsius for sicomine to expand to four times its original volume. It just goes to show that the temperature is actually crucial for this sicomine epoxy foam. Let's put it uh, on time lapse to see how much it's growing. I have to say I was expecting a bit more spectacular growth. Nevertheless, we were happy with the result. Okay, babe, stop staring into the hole and let's go home. Absolutely freezing, but we like to come here sometimes just to look at the river and all the boats swinging on the mooring buoys. It's always a beautiful sight. It's freezing cold. So let's go to the boat. Hello, lovely. They blocked us in, but I suppose they know that we're not um, planning to come out of the shed anytime soon. It's hard like a stone. Yeah, it's, it's completely different than this one. This one I can punch her with with my finger. Yeah. The other one is just... It's not going to happen, you know? It's just... It's perfect. And that's the whole point. It's perfect. It looks like we spilled yogurt in there. ordered some more of that epoxy expanding foam. Actually even two sets. Ideally we would like to pour another layer of uh, the foam today on top of the uh, fiberglass mat that we are going to uh, start uh, laying now. But to squeeze it all within the day, we're going to have to lay the fiberglass and uh, put the heaters on and uh, speed, the speed up the process of drying um, of the fiberglass mat. And once that's uh, pretty dry, uh, we are then going to put the foam. Well, hopefully we manage to do it within a day. For the initial cure, um, when it's actually expanding, this uh, product requires 20 degrees Celsius temperature. Um, and the post-cure temperature is 40 degrees uh, Celsius, which means we would have to keep the heaters on uh, on full blast and um, get the keel to um, roughly 40 degrees uh, Celsius. Keep an eye on it uh, throughout the day. And that way we will make sure we get the optimum um, results with this. Otherwise, uh, it's probably not going to cure as well as it should if it doesn't get the uh, required temperature. The other foam that we showed you, which is the polyurethane foam, it's much easier uh, to use. Well, you just, it's, it's a much shorter cure time and it expands much quicker and it doesn't require such uh, high temperatures when it's uh, curing. 
so, but it's not the one we want to use. This one is much more sort of rigid and um, stiff once it dries, but also Seacoming uh, has better waterproofing um, capabilities. First, we create a layer out of fiberglass which sits on top of the foam and bonds to either side of the sump tank. This way we fortify what before was the weakest point of the keel, and that was an empty sump tank. While this is drying, Ziggy moves to the other side of the keel. Because of the thickness of the hole, this was much thicker here than there. And now we have a void in here and we're almost there on this side. So it's almost flush here. And right now we will just go for shape like this, which will be more as a infill layers than just something to, to put more strength into it. I don't really want to use any of a filler. I could use a filler and fill that one with the filler, sand it down and it's ready. But uh, when I saw the filler here after so many years was really, really soft on the bottom, I think I would prefer to put layers of fiberglass. And then this side is it's pretty done. Back to starboard side again. It is dry, but Ziggy wants some more layers. So, well, another five, six layers. And um, five, five, six layers. Earlier today, we put about five layers of normal matting, which is not com combi mat, on the top of the expanding foam. Right now, we add, we're going to add another six a combi mat we will achieve about one centimeter of thickness of fiberglass mm -hmm. and that's our first bulkhead i call them bulkheads because i don't know yeah i don't know actually is. string stringers is it like a structural stringers i'm yeah. not sure something like that um and then what we put the heating on again with dry it with um, heat gun as well <coughs> and see whether we can actually manage to um, pour in that uh, epoxy um, expanding foam today. So we will see. No pressure. Is that your office? Yeah. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do in this office today? I'm going to watch the game, World Cup game. Who's playing? Poland versus France. I think this is going to be one of the most strangest places to watch the game. Like, kind of a weird place. No, I don't think there's anyone out there doing that. When we are satisfied that those layers are dry enough, we mix a second batch of epoxy foam. It's hard to pour, no? It's quite thick. Mm -hmm. uh, Shall we put the other heater on? On the other side?
screen there. They need a bit more movement. So we on the ball there, Kane. We had quite a success that day. We managed to complete everything we set out to do. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for the Polish football team. Sadly, they lost.